right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Two weeks from Christmas and no sign of snow in our forecast. Why our chance for a white Christmas keeps dropping. Fight for the finals. Ruby Lee goes live from L.A. We're there as family and friends cheer her on from a small town Missouri bar. Our top story, an urgent call for St. Louis leaders to act now to help the homeless. It's winter time now. It's starting to get cold. People are starting to die. Just hours ago, more than a dozen people rallied outside City Hall. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. The group is calling on city leadership and the Board of Aldermen to take action after the unhoused Bill of Rights was taken off the table. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski is live outside City Hall where a homeless encampment was shut down about two months ago. Laura. Mike and Kelly, one of the founders of Lifeline Aid Group says they're very concerned about the homeless who say they have nowhere to go and want more action from city leaders. We have homeless people living around the corner right now as we speak. As the temperature continues to drop, concern continues to grow for the homeless people living on St. Louis streets. It's winter time now. It's starting to get cold. People are starting to die. This is the time where people start to get frostbite because they don't have the proper clothing, the proper shelter, they're just the proper necessities. If you spend some time out in the cold, you have just a taste of what they live through day to day. Co-founder of Lifeline Aid Group, Drew Falvey, says unhoused people have lost trust in city leaders. We are out here because of the unhoused Bill of Rights. Um, there hasn't been any traction on it. There hasn't been any news coming out at all. Um, it's just been eerily quiet. There's been no new updates about it. Renee Adams says she knows firsthand how easily someone can become homeless. I was working full time. I was living in New York City. I did not have credit I, and I could not find a place to live thanks to the kindness of my coworker, who I did not know for some time. Uh, I had a place, thank God, to stay, but by all accounts, I was homeless. Falvey says he wants to see action before he sees another life loss to the cold. More shelters, more resources. And definitely just, I would like to advise just Bring back the warming bus. We had a warming bus back then. Why not bring that back now? People relied on that to stay warm. The mayor's office responded saying we've greatly increased our year round shelter bed count, secured a brick and mortar alternative to the warming bus and continue to seek organizations for additional shelter space using an available pool of funds. Alderwoman Alicia Sanye uh, spoke after the Unhoused Bill of Rights was taken off the table in a statement on Twitter saying that there would be some new bills coming up, but we haven't seen any updates on that yet just yet. And Alderwoman Sanye has not responded. I reached out to her after the rally and I've not heard back from her and other aldermen tonight. Reporting live from downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Well, it's another chilly night on the streets of St. Louis and across the by state temperatures falling. After a mild Monday, Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is here to tell us how cold it's going to get in this weather first forecast. Well, in some of the outlying areas tonight where the winds have settled down and under this mainly clear sky, which we had in time for sunset this evening, we're going to look at those temperatures back down into the low and mid 20s. But most of us have a bit of a breeze hanging around and that's holding temperatures up just a little bit, especially in the urban area. So it's all a function tonight of whether you have a breeze. Right now, 40 degrees in St. Louis, but a lot of the outlying areas have already managed to slide back into the 20s. So there's a lack of active weather and mainly dry weather into next week. Overall near to above normal temperatures, but we do have a few chilly mornings. One of them again tomorrow morning as we're down into the 20s away from town, low 30s in town. Rest of the week, it looks like we're trending a little bit higher on those overnight temperatures. We'll talk about the weekend in just a few minutes, Mike. All right, Scott. Good news tonight for drivers in North St. Louis County. After more than three years, MoDOT's multi-million dollar I-270 North Corridor project in Hazelwood is finally finished. New tonight, Robert Townsend caught up with some relieved drivers excited about tomorrow's grand opening and ribbon cutting. Took long enough. For more than three and a half years, Danny Weekly and tens of thousands of drivers along this stretch of Interstate 270 in North St. Louis County have endured nagging detours. Maneuver around in a little recklessness and it was hard to get to the dentist up here. 
and aggravating delays. Coming home, it's been a little rough. And if you don't know the highway, all the construction, you will miss it. For drivers, the big mess took off right after the Missouri Department of Transportation's $278 million project started in April of 2020. MoDOT says it gave seven major interchanges along an eight-mile stretch between Lindbergh Boulevard and Highway 367 major makeovers. The original stretch of road was paved way back in the 1960s. Inconvenience where all that construction is going on. But now, Weekly will soon breathe a big sigh of relief because the big improvement project is finally completed. On Tuesday, MoDOT will show off the reconstructed interchanges at several well-traveled spots, including North Limburg, New Florissant Road, and new and old Halls Ferry Roads. Drivers will also see an additional lane in both directions on I-270. The multi-million dollar project will also include new and replaced bridges. Now, MoDOT also tells us traffic signals out here have been tweaked for the better. I like the lanes that's coming, but hope it runs smooth. MoDOT's confident it will. Their long-awaited ceremony shifts into high gear Tuesday morning. Definitely glad. I'm glad, but I won't be there. I'll be at work. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Governor Mike Parson will be among the speakers during the grand opening. It will be held at the I-270 North Lindbergh Interchange tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. and the public is invited. A hunting incident over the weekend claimed the life of an 18-year-old. Officials say it appears to be an accidental shooting. Trent Bush was a senior at Winfield High School in Lincoln County. He was duck hunting with friends at the Ted Shanks Conservation Area in Northern Pike County just after 7 Sunday morning. Officials with the Missouri Department of Conservation say it appears to be a tragic hunting incident and nothing more. Bush's principal says he was an athlete and a ray of sunshine and adds that it's important to his family that something good comes from this tragedy. He's a great young man doing what he loved and we want to make sure that everybody gets to enjoy it in a safe fashion so that nothing like this ever happens again. Also, additional counselors were on hand today for students and staff and Trent's mother released a statement to Five in Your Side saying, quote, he was with two of his close friends. Never in his life would he have been upset with his friend over this. We stand with the friends that were with him because that's what Trent would want us to do, end quote. Tonight, Illinois lawmakers are calling on the CDC to look into the health impacts of ongoing sewage and flooding issues in Cahokia Heights. Congresswoman Nikki Budzinski and Senators Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth cite a study from Washington University in St. Louis. The study claims nearly half of adults in the town are infected with a bacteria that can cause ulcers and gastric cancer. The state lawmaker is also calling on the Illinois Department of Health to investigate. It's a fan favorite for blues fans at Enterprise Center tonight. It is the tune Ruby Lee belted out during the semifinals of The Voice. The 16-year-old yodeling sensation from Lincoln County is hoping tonight's performance will secure her a spot in next week's finale. And tonight her friends and family packed a bar in Marthasville to watch her perform in the top nine. Our Justina Cornell spoke to some of her biggest fans as they rave about Ruby. Country roads, take me home. It's a song picked by fans. Take me home, country roads. 16-year-old Ruby Lee sang her heart out. The message in the song hits close to home. I think she channeled the holy roots there of small towns, dirt roads, gravel roads. Um, I think she had a blast up there. I mean, it looked like it. While Ruby performs in Hollywood, <laughs> here in Missouri, family, friends, and fans <laughs> pack Corey's Twin Gables and Marthasville. Corey at Corey's Twin Gables hired her when she was 11 years old for her Friday night entertainment. So, I mean, that's got to tell you something. <laughs> Ruby's mom and sister know this moment is pivotal as Ruby competes in the top nine. I think she killed it. And those who've been watching for a while. 
We've been watching her perform since she was nine. Actually, Ruby played here when she was 11. They say it's been a beautiful journey to witness. I think the first few notes I ever heard her sing, I mean, head to toe goosebumps. Family friends love Ruby's larger than life voice and admire her even bigger heart. She's got a heart of gold. As the teen inches closer to a potential record deal, her loved ones say Ruby will always be connected to her roots. First winner from Missouri is gonna be amazing. To see her and see her perform is amazing, and I, I, I think she's gonna win it. Tell everybody vote for her, please. Now the biggest message tonight is to vote. Now you can find that information on our website, kcdk.com, and go to the section as seen on TV. Reporting in Martha's Bell, Justina Cornell, Five on your side. You can vote on The Voice website and the app. Voting ends tomorrow at 6 a.m. The results will be announced tomorrow night at 8 right here on 5 on your side. Dependable drives. Tonight, car owners weigh in on gas and electric vehicles. And it's taking a while even for established car makers to work through those growing pains. The cars they say will have you steering clear of the repair shop. Going home for the holidays? Record crowds are expected if you're going by planes, trains, and automobiles. The two travel days you may want to avoid. Travel weather for the next couple of weeks, it's looking pretty good for much of the country. A closer look at the upcoming weekend.